Hi everyone, welcome to the marathon. Today I've got Brian Mulondo from Uganda, an entrepreneur, an actor, an MC. Um, like I always say, you know, uh, a marathon or business, business is like a marathon, you know. Today we get you here, you know, our guest, our very special guest from Uganda in terms of his entrepreneurial journey, you know, and what can we learn from him and how we can improve our business? How are you, Brian? Excited to be here, guys. <laughs> really excited and stressed because <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to many people and yes. like there's a lot of possibilities, but good to be here. Really good to be here. Thank you for gracing us with your presence here. We Thank really, you for really hosting me. Thank you for hosting me. Awesome. Um, how's disco going? Uh, yeah. My, I can't sleep. <laughs> I've not slept for the past uh, two nights mm -hmm. because there's a lot of ideas that are being generated. There's a lot of people who are willing to help. And uh, I think as, as a media entrepreneur, one of the things that you struggle with is to get your creations out there. Uh, so Disco has, has just opened a, like a possibility mm -hmm. you can. And people are willing to answer any questions that mm -hmm. you have, willing to, to collaborate. And I think as young people in this industry, we need that. Yeah, we need a lot of that. So this cop is exciting, really exciting. Yeah. Your entrepreneurial journey, how has it been? How did you start? Do you know? Started from the bottom. Now I'm yeah. in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so I started out in a garage. So my company is called Garage. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I was living in a garage. Yeah. Uh, so if Bezos is watching this, I'm coming for you. <laughs> but I sat down in a garage and one day I got a, you know, a gig to edit like five uh, productions, like five uh, theater-like productions. And when I was done editing this work, uh, the company tells me, but we don't hire individuals, we hire companies. So you have to give us an invoice with a company name. Mm. So I didn't want to go to a friend of mine who had a company and ask, hey, give me your, your. said, maybe this is an opportunity for me to start out. Mm. Uh, so when they asked me for the company name, I had no clue. I was like, but why don't I call it Garage? And, and it was born and uh, got, you know, very little money but i i got in and started uh, doing that been doing a lot of weddings um until i discovered uh you know tv um i'm i'm a tv presenter i'm a news anchor uh, so i edit i film i do everything yeah so uh branching out in like really opening starting my own company was problematic in the first place because I was also looking for people who are like me or better than me and usually that is a problem especially if you you know you've had people in the back who who kind of waited for you to develop all these uh, skills that you have and you're not being patient with other people that you want to hire but uh, garage is where I have really uh, been for the past eight years now and uh, I provide content, I develop it and uh, now we, with, with opportunities like this, we're going into um, distributing it to international markets nice. which is really yeah. amazing, yeah. Great, how, how are you finding in terms of balancing things, you know? Being a presenter, mm. um, actor, MC, and a creative entrepreneur, how do you find you know the, the balance in terms of you know nourishing that entrepreneurial skill? Yeah, it is, it is hard. It it is a lot of work. Cause so m my typical day is, I wake up at four a.m. at the station at five o'clock. I run a, a breakfast show up to ten o'clock. And from that, if I've scheduled meetings with clients, so you go for those meetings. So by two o'clock, when you go to garage, 
you're exhausted but you have to you know yeah, yeah. edit this work or, or you know um, supervise look at the corrections all that it is hectic mm. uh, so I, I want to tell people who want to go this journey if you are a a cry baby this is not your world yeah, yeah, yeah. it is so hectic it is so hard long nights uh, so for me every time I find people they ask me so what time do you go to bed I'm like whenever I'm done mm. if I'm done with the project I go to bed if I'm not then you know you you have to make it work uh, you have to push yes um, so the balance really I'm, I'm just trying to find that balance now by hiring some people um, or, or giving just passing on the responsibility yes. to someone else so mm. because also now I have noticed that if I want to do everything then the, yeah I cannot be away and the business closes mm. so that's that's crazy so I have had to bring on several young people to teach or and, and most of them even are more intelligent than me yeah so I, I get people who do stuff that I cannot do and say hey take this on you suffer for me <laughs> mm -hmm. suffer do all the hard work and I'll just come to supervise and I think uh, most of the entrepreneurs end up doing everything mm -hmm. and and burn out quickly yeah so I was there until I realized I need to bring on more people I need to give opportunity to more people just like someone gave me an opportunity uh, so uh, that that has been you know, and I'm, I'm married I have two children so family is also calling you know <laughs> you're at the <laughs> office you at the office and wife is telling you is asking you so um, sh should we pick you up I'm like I've just started the project I cannot go away yeah. and you know our work is very addictive mm. the moment you sit in front of that computer you just want to get it done so you know my kids so i've had to schedule myself say okay sunday i don't care who you are mm. i am with my children in terms of uh, your first employee mm. you know and how was it for you to get that first employee and as well passing the knowledge to your staff like what you're saying like you to bring in you know um, people to help you to build this vision yeah you know? yeah um, and you know passing on the vision say guys this is what we do. It's not about me. It's about us. Your first employee and making them to understand where the person, where the brand or garage productions mm. wants to go and grow in yeah. terms of impacting the world. I had a huge challenge uh, even finding my first employee. So what I did at first was to uh, co-share space with a couple of people, several companies. So if you know one of the guys was really good at uh, graphics so we sat in a space this is very big <laughs> this is huge so we, we, we could sit two people on the table and say hey, I have a, a project do for me the montage like two or three minutes mm. and he does it quickly and I edit we film we we co-produced a couple of uh, stuff <coughs> so when I left that office uh, I did most of the work myself in the beginning, but I, I started looking for someone who could take on things like administrative work. Mm -hmm. I had to communicate my vision very, very clearly. So even when I'm not in the country, like now she is running everything. Yeah. So I, I brought on people who knew exactly how my mind works. And I had to tell them, if it is not this, if you cannot give me this, don't come. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so we, we kind of, we ha even in the office, we've written out the vision nice. of, of, of the business, you know. And our tagline is dream, dare, act. Yeah. We dream a lot. Mm. We are very daring. Mm. But at the end of the day, all those two things don't matter if you don't act on it. Mm. Yeah. So we've had to go out in faith uh, for, for many of the projects. We're like, yo, we've been dreaming this thing for so long. Can we act on it yes. now? So that vision is very clear with her. And, and even when, I'm, when we need people, if she is looking for people to give us something, 
I tell her, you know what the DNA of this mm. uh, company is. You need to communicate that clearly to the people who are going to come and work with us. If they do not understand this DNA, we are going to fail. Mm. All of us. Yeah. Mm. And um, I think we are succeeding in, in communicating that vision now and have fantastic partners alongside us who uh, make sure we get, you know, things done. I mean, we, we call in a camera crew and it films uh, an episode for free and they know that we shall pay them, this thing is working. We've proven ourselves over the past that what we've tested has worked. Uh, and so we, we, are not, we are not joking when we say, well, this is the big dream. Yeah, And I think that's where most people lose faith when you dream and not act. People are like, these guys, yeah. Yeah, uh, like 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 uh, uh, it, it, Rosie says, uh, these guys, uh, where now? What is le leave me alone? What is yeah. that one? Swa, that one. <laughs> so so most yeah. people, they hear your dream and say that guy dreams a lot. He's all talk and no action. Mm -hmm. So we've learned we've learned to move away from that. Mm -hmm. We dream, we act on it. Exactly. Yeah, however small it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then coming to, to, to contracts, you know, um, as someone who's in the creative entrepreneurial space, you know, sometimes as creatives we forget small little things like contracts, you know, I'll give you an example, or sometimes the deal looks lucrative on paper, like I'll sign <laughs> and then you sign, one is to realize, or maybe when you're sitting with your lawyer, that is not a contract, it's just yeah. a bunch of words that don't mean anything, yeah. so as a result, People they are able to take advantage of creative mm -hmm. entrepreneurs because you know there's lack of understanding of contracts mm -hmm. and maybe doing due intelligence. Yes. And yes. you know, thinking that oh, he's just an editor, he's running a production company, yeah. he doesn't have everything in place, you know. What has been some of the challenges that you've learned and how has that helped yeah. you become a better entrepreneur because we all know every, every creative <laughs> entrepreneur is that's the last thing we think about that's the last thing we think about yeah so at my fingers i actually got my fingers burnt the first time so i hired this guy did well for like the first two months and then we just started to have different creative directions i was like yo this is what we want this is what the client wants you do not create your own thing and i woke up one day and told him we're done it's been good maybe we'll work in the future together but for this particular project mm. we're done oh that boy <laughs> that boy i still remember him that boy went and hired the lawyer and it was big really? it was bad mm. and 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 from that time i have created what I call service agreements. Yes. So not very detailed, like where the letters are so small, T's and C's apply, mm -hmm. but the deliverables are very clear Specific. from my end. Deliverables are very clear from your end. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we want to sever this relationship, what do we do about that? So for me, that is the most critical part. And if your your objectives are not, if your KPIs are not met, what are the consequences of that? Mm. Because, you know, as creative people, we zone out when we are creating something. Mm. But because we get bored easily, we are never in one place. Yeah. And that is the story of many editors, many cameramen. But also, we hustle hard. So you have like 50 gigs in a week. Yeah. And so you end up not even committing yourself fully to, to something. So you Just, give yeah. part, you give part. Mm. So for me, when I'm contracting people, I, I specifically lay that out and say, if I've also not met uh, what I'm supposed to do, for example, especially for payments, mm. I say, keep my work until I pay you so that you know that I am committed. committed. To, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll say, I'm not going to pay you today if you can wait if you cannot keep my card make sure you don't lose my work yes don't <laughs> uh, that's the word format is bad in our word format is bad 
so so th th that that also builds trust because yeah. if he knows that uh, this guy left me with his work mm. say yes I left it with you because I now make that payment but also I'd like to ask entrepreneurs to think critically about things like taxes the tax man is critical because mm. if you have a vision of a, of becoming you know the 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 dream works of this world the marvels of this world you have to play by the rules yeah, yeah? so the tax man start now start now Sweet. because they always come they will always come if you want to grow big you start with kaiser chiefs hello and then before you know it <laughs> and th before you know it you're contracted by a big yeah. big club you know, Calf comes in here and says, you guys have seen what you're doing with Kaiser Chiefs. Mm. Can, you, can you start doing work for Calf? Mm. You have to play by the rules. Yes. So if you have not done that work before, then you start running around, you're knocking at people's offices. Yeah, hey, I, I, I need a tax clearance certificate now. It's not possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah? Not so bad. start small, start paying income tax. If you have a huge crew, you can pay uh, in, in my country, we call it pay as you earn. Yes. Yeah, pay, yeah. yeah. VAT, small, small things like that, it will, you'll be rewarded yeah. a, a lot a in lot. the future. Yeah. Value, I think sometimes as, as creative entrepreneurs or as entrepreneurs, you know, we forget that word value and how to unlock that world yeah. to build on the business. You know, mm. things like what you're saying, being tax compliant mm. and stuff. Yes. You know? yeah. Within your business, you know, when you think about content now, being in Africa, mm. you know, Africa is such a hot topic. It yes. Yeah. On every billionaire's li uh, lips. Right there, now. There, there are so many summits. Yes. In fact, so <laughs> <laughs> Russia Africa Russia. summit, the UK Africa yeah. summit. So much. Yeah. What's your take about, you know, as creatives? entrepreneurs in terms of the value that you know that we can unlock and build um, relationships and you know and build that word value to build businesses that are not just fly by night but businesses that someone can come and buy that business I always mm. say to my business to my business associate whenever I go into business I want to start a business that mm. I know 10 years from now mm. hypothetically speaking I can say you know what you want to buy it buy it yeah so when I'm building a business or when I'm involved in anything I'm building with that mindset yeah. so meaning everything has to be intact yeah, yeah. What's, what are your thoughts about that word value and how as Africans we can work together mm. to unlock that value and seeing that content mm. you know african content right now is the buzzword yeah it's it's hot and that's one of the things that you know uh, brought me to disco because africa is a topic everywhere and and someone even insinuated that yo this uh, you know the, the colonialist is back <laughs> in the form of content <laughs> but it is an opportunity for us because technology has enabled us uh, to tell our own story from our backyard. We don't have to go anywhere. You can sit here and film anything that is Africa and tell the right stories. Because if you watch TV, it's war, disease, and suffering. That's what they do. In fact, some media houses, that is the part of their vision to communicate a disaster mm -hmm. in this continent. But just around your home, just around your community there are stories of hope you know uh innovators young people creating uh amazing apps yeah in my own country uh, people are creating brilliant apps that that uh, cure that, that, that help detect cancer uh sickle cell mm. uh we need to highlight those stories we need to highlight yeah. those stories. We're, we're currently documenting uh, a story of this guy in the countryside who helps women, transport women to their hospitals because the hospital is far away. Wow. The ladies stay on top of the hill. When they are seven months pregnant, they walk down and go back to their homes when they've had the baby. So this guy started a project for bicycles and, and motorcycles 
and he does that for free. Why aren't we telling those stories on international media? Mm -hmm. Why are we going, oh, a war has broke out and 50 people are dead? Mm -hmm. so, so for me, let's start. This issue of Africa being the hot topic is an opportunity for us to tell our own stories. Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about building value in the company, you start with the small things. If, if funders are out there, I, there are so many Africans on, on these uh, pages, crowdfunding, mm -hmm. but we have not taken care of the basics. We don't document anything in our, in our companies. Mm -hmm. We, you know, when we spend, we don't document anything. When a, an investor comes to uh, your company, says, show me the books, you're like, ah, <laughs> ah the books. The, book. <laughs> the man with the key has gone. <laughs> Who is the man with the kids? It's you. It's you yeah. You've not recited anything. You don't have a vision of mm. your company. You're mm. just thinking about tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. So I like what you do. You think about the ten, uh, the ten-year plan. Mm. Write down your vision. As as a company, we have a vision board. Nice. Yeah. When I get in, I'm now I'm going to expand the vision board because of this. Comp I'm stressed out. So even when I'm selling it right now in its current form where it's not looking very good, I can sell the vision yes. because I know the vision here. So I think for me, entrepreneurs, whatever you're doing, doesn't have to be TV, whether you're into fintech, whether you're, um, there's a, a friend of mine who wants to just create ambulances. So he's procuring ambulances from the UK and he wants to sell the business later. But he knows if you ask him what does your business look like in the next 10 years, he knows everything. Mm. And he has been able to attract that because of that vision. He has been able to attract funding uh, from organizations like Mild May. Uh, so because he knows what he sees it. Yeah. So document your vision. Mm. Document that vision. Um, uh, but also one of the things I've realized in, in my journey is integrity is a big part mm -hmm. of your journey as an entrepreneur, not just for yourself, but to your clients. Because if, if for example, Rosie trusts me, if you trust me, you can go and speak for me mm -hmm. to whoever is interested in my company. Uh, you can tell me, yo, I found this one, and I think they'll be a good partner for you. And that's what we are lacking. I am dishonest to you. Even you, my brother, we, we, we go out in the evening and drink beer mm -hmm. and eat whatever, but I'm still dishonest with you. Yeah, so I, I, I think those are things that we need. They, they seem very small, but in the bigger picture, they are the, the things that will create magic for your business. So I've had to do that. If I can't come, I tell you I won't come. I'm not available. I'm honest. Yeah. So where to for garage productions? You know, how can where can people mm. find you? You mm. know, what's like in your business? If there's someone out there watching, mm. you know, um, I always say, as I was saying earlier on, you know, with this kind of content that we're creating, you know, it's social media. It's you, you, all you need is just one engagement, not ten engagements. Yeah. One engagement, yeah. it changes the face of your business. Yeah. You know, um, w where to from now? You know, what do you need in your business? Mm. You know, mm. it's the five minutes to sell yourself within yeah. the show. And how can people get <laughs> hold of you? Yeah, you know. Um, so, like we, s when when this interview was starting, I was telling you, started from the bottom. Now we're here. You know? <laughs> yeah. We're here. We are. Social media has given us an opportunity to to fight with the big guys. Yeah. Yes, they have. They have a lot more, but we are now. We can enter boardrooms now yes. and say, "This is what I offer. You have seen it work. Let's talk." Mm. So at Garage, we are producing a. A, a, a show that curates social media conversations in Uganda and across the entire world. Mm -hmm. And it's already on the TV. And this five minute clip is the most funded clip on the local broadcaster. And so w with that, we can enter the boardroom and mm. say, no, we, we shall not take that. Mm. 
because we bring something of value Advantage, yes. to the station uh, we have developed a a show for mothers and mm. children mm. and it's running on facebook it's called bump love you know the bump yeah so bump love the ladies will it's it's a brilliant show mm. women and again i talked about authenticity yes yeah and telling your own story so we have got five women from uh, representing every part of you know the country the the entrepreneur the corporate woman the stay-at-home woman the very religious woman mm -hmm. who uh, you know is so humble and all these women are sharing the experiences on how to be mothers what they do their children mm -hmm. we have a show about uh, breaking the patriarchy you know the mm -hmm. feminist voice yes um, uh, gender parity it's called black no sugar mm. take it black as it no is sugar. it is doing well on 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 uh, youtube mm. okay uh, and twitter so we we can no longer now just go to the broadcasters and say hey please help us have a concert they <laughs> see what is happening online and they're telling us give us a piece of that mm. and let's broadcast it to to, to the entire population so uh we are looking we are seeking for partners that share that vision mm -hmm. of getting these stories out we are getting more into showcasing the continent to europe and america we have a lot of tourism going on mm. we have beautiful sceneries so we are documenting all those things we we have actually amazing effort in healthcare, in innovation the world is not just looking at us uh, by mistake. They know the capacity that we have. So Garage is seeking for people who share those, you know, that passion to tell the story. And and if you can come, uh, please come with some money too, because that is very critical. Uh, money is important in, in what we do. We do yeah, yeah. yeah, the camera equipment is is expensive. Uh, the crews, you know, we have young people who do amazing work, but they need to be paid, they need yeah. to be funded. And we tell these stories, yeah? Mm -hmm. And many of you can't afford those stories, can't afford to, you know, just bankroll a project. Yes. And how much money are we talking about? 50 to 100,000 shillings, $100,000. Mm -hmm. That's little money. Mm -hmm. You can bankroll. So we're seeking for people like that. Mm -hmm. But also, we are very passionate about passing on uh, the skills that we have. Mm. So through uh, the show that uh, it's called Timeline. Mm -hmm. And through that show, we are uh, literally discovering talent, TV talent. Yeah. So we are bragging now in Uganda as the factory mm -hmm. for, for talent. Nice. And through that show, we've been able to produce four major tv stars plus a news anchor that has just started uh, out on the show uh, so um, anyone who is interested in skilling young people please come and we work together and we partner together we are very creative people young people are very creative we think things mm -hmm. uh, and if you're out there and you're a boomer come come and we think together you tell us what happened in the 60s we'll tell you what is going to happen in the uh, uh you know 3000 because yes. yeah. science has enabled us to figure that out and let's create a world that you know we we desire our children to live in so garage is looking for such people we have uh through partnering with other people created a platform for filmmakers in uganda mm. so all their capacity so if you guys are seeking for to, to do maybe feature films or documentaries all this stuff in uganda you come to us and we'll connect you with these people mm. and i want to brag uganda if you've watched queen of katwe that's where the story is. Uh, Wakanda is Uganda. Yeah? <laughs> it was filmed in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And we've had the opportunity to work on such projects. Mm -hmm. Last King of Scotland. Mm -hmm. All those blockbusters were made in Uganda. So uh, we are creating that platform for filmmakers. 
uh, to network uh, producers from you know South Africa. Mm. So we've met some really amazing people here. Rosie Motene has been a big part of this journey to connect us with those people. Uh, so we, we, we are seeking for people like Rosie mm. to come and tell us, guys, your dream is valid, yeah, and let mm. me uh, help you, you know, elevate, elevate that mm. and don't just stay in your community. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for. Where can people reach you out on Facebook, email, Twitter? You yeah. Know, how can they get in contact with you? So, you can, yeah. yeah, Twitter, Facebook, Garage Group. That's how you can reach us at Garage Group. Uh, you can send us an email, garagegrouppuganda at gmail.com. Uh, send us a, a text. My personal handle is Brian Mrondo. You will see uh, me on Twitter. Um, just look for the handsome guy. You will see me. When, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, reach us and let's talk. Um, and see how we can change you know the world if you're seeking if you're looking for ugandans that can come to your countries and also document what is happening yeah give us a call and we come and and partner together in your last answer you mentioned like connecting you know producers if there's certain locations that they want to use in uganda you mm -hmm. know and just cross-pollination yes in terms of creatives you know how important it is as africans that we start working together you know um i think it's it's as africans we've got that thing where we are we still prefer you know the whites you know but i think as africans we have to work together because as africans we are one yeah. you know how important i love what this uh rose she's doing you know because yeah. with the agency you know she has you know every Everywhere. it's yeah. when i look at a, a agency it's an African agency, yes. and that makes it unique. Yeah. As an executive producer, you, you know, you know, if you need this kind of talent, you tap into you tell, it. You, yeah, She's she not will, like she focusing you. on one aspect of people. Yes. You know yeah. how important it is as Africans to start working together mm. and to believe in our own products as yeah. brothers and sisters to start empowering to each other because it starts with me and you. Yes. <laughs> you know to to, to start having those conversations and to be leaders in those kind of things and, be, and lead by examples. We need a huge paradigm shift. I cannot begin to even overemphasize the importance of partners. So you don't just go to look for money. Yeah, you know, the biggest ideas were started in a coffee shop uh, on a bus. And that's because people were willing to say, hi, my name is Brian. What do you do? Mm. And as I, I guess it's just African, we do not want to, to have those conversations. Mm. So if you're on the bus or on the train, you, all you want is to keep quiet. And now mm -hmm. technology cool. has made it even harder. The phone, everyone on the bus is on the phone, yeah? What are you doing? Mm. That information will stay there. You will find it mm. after the bus ride. So we, we, I, I encourage people to, every time you have an opportunity to meet someone, you ask them what they do and how you think you can help them. Mm. It's okay if you can't help them. Those are conversations that we need to start having as Africans. Um, the politicians, uh, say African solutions to African problems. Mm. Can we bring that to reality? To reality, yeah. Because we do not have African solutions yet. Oh, the problems are absolutely African, but the solutions are not because we are not sitting as communities yes. to get the solutions. The world has plans for Africa. We are always traveling yeah. to the West to benchmark this mm. thing called be I hate that word mm. benchmark, but we still don't copy. Mm. If we are copying and pasting, yeah. But we are not copying. Mm. We are just going for the trip and we come back home and sit. Uh, so those conversations must happen. Let's bring the African uh, solution to the African problem to reality. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching the marathon. You heard it from our guest, Brian. Um, I hope you know you learned a couple of things that should apply to your business. Um, don't forget to like, follow us on all social platforms and, you know, follow Brian. If you're an investor out there or if you're, you know, a buyer of content, 
um, you know, Uganda's got a lot to offer. You yeah. know, uh, connect with Brian. Let's create some conversations. I think it's high time, you know, we break the stereotype of how content is distributed, you know. Um, what a better way to connect with a creative entrepreneur from Uganda. Yeah. So please uh, connect with him and like, comment below on our social platforms. Uh, like I always say, you know, you commenting motivates us to do this all for free, you know. Uh, with these beautiful lights, beautiful cameras, beautiful guests, all for free. You know why? Because we're trying to change the narrative of an African entrepreneur, you know, and teaching Africans in terms of what is business and how you can scale your business to your value, you know. Um, thank you so much for watching. Peace out.